Hey folks, welcome to this video, five tips on giving feedback to students. Let's get into it. Uh, the first tip I always give faculty advice on is chunking their assignments. Whenever there's an assignment that's some significant portion of students' grades, I always encourage to think about how that might be broken up. And it can be broken up into several different ways, but the idea is to have several pieces of it rather than this one all or nothing approach. So the reason I like this is first of all, it gives students a trajectory for them to slowly figure out what they're doing and how to do it rather than waiting to the last minute. It also allows for what I think is really important, which is course correction or uh, better alignment. So as the student is working through these pieces of an assignment and submitting them and getting feedback from you, they're better to realign the direction that their assignment is going to. We've all had the student who we, we submit, you know, we have them do the assignment and we get it at the very end of the semester. And all of a sudden the assignment is very much different. The assignment they submitted is very much different from the assignment we were looking for. Uh, it also gives us an opportunity to really look at the assignment as a form of dialogue. Uh, that is feedback that goes back and forth, this opportunity to check in with the student to make sure they understand it, but also to hear from the student about, you know, what is working and what, what isn't working. I think there's also a, a great use of using rubrics throughout this. Uh, which allow them to, you know, think of the rubric as something that you expand as you go along to each part of the assignment. So, you know, you have a, a lower uh, or a uh, less defined rubric, kind of, you know, are they hitting the, the essential marks that maybe going into further detail, or are you moving it from uh, your basic level into your expert level or advanced level, however you want to frame it, but really using this as an opportunity for them to also chart their progress and for you to kind of show where they're doing really well and where they might need some opportunities. And then along with that is always opportunity to revise. And so the chunk assignment is kind of that idea of there's this constant revision process. That's always important for students. So that's always important to communicate to students is that aspect of revising and regularly revising and reiterating. Uh, the other, another really good point that I, I encourage faculty to think about is think about when the assignment is due and when you are going to give feedback. Uh, because feedback should happen sooner than later. Uh, I, I, it's hard to let it go, or I think it's a problem to let it go more than a week. And I think it's a problem, especially if you're going to do that chunked version, to let it go too far. Because you want to make sure they have that feedback, they can act on that feedback before the next part of that assignment is, is due. The tip or trick I always think about is when is my grading period? That is when in a given week do I anticipate I'm likely to be doing grading? And I try to set the, the deadline for in and around there so that if most of the papers come in, I can grade them and get them back within you know a couple days rather than a week or longer. Uh, make sure the students feel they have everything they need in order to go forward. I also really encourage this idea of focusing on the high level feedback. Um, I do this in a couple of ways, or I encourage this in a couple of ways. First, you know, you may encounter issues that you want the student to be aware of, you know, and these may not be uh, issues that say fundamentally change their argument, their presentation, the, the premise of what they are trying to say or do, but they may be more. Uh, they might be more superficial, they might be more technical, whether that's, you know, the, the if they're doing a presentation, the slides aren't, aren't well, you know, concept, conceived, they, maybe they have some grammatical issues. What I recommend there is pointing out the issue once, but don't point out every example, you know, oh, you know, just a reminder, you might want to, you know, read through this, or you might want to double check or read aloud, you know, when you're writing an essay, because you can sometimes, you know, miss or better yet capture things when you're reading it aloud. Uh, so you don't want to get lost in the weeds and you don't want the student to get lost in the weeds. You want to focus on does this assignment really, what they've submitted, does this really get to the heart of what you want them to do? And again, thinking about that assignment as it aligns with what your course objectives are, do you see the student demonstrating this? Or is this, you know, is it, is it off target? And if so, how do you help course correct them? Uh, I often think about 
you know, trying to see it through the student's eyes and think about, you know, this is where they landed. So what does that tell me about where I put emphasis in discussing this assignment, where I put emphasis in trying to get them to um, engage with it in a particular way, and also to understand where the student is at and why or how they might have come to this conclusion and how we can negotiate or work towards, uh, you know, what we what we both feel is, is the appropriate uh, finished product. And so this is where that high level feedback comes in. I think using thoughtful questions, and I emphasize thoughtful questions here. This is very easy, easily a place where you can ask um, rhetorical questions that are, are not meant to uplift the student or not meant to encourage the student, but to dismiss the student. So being, think, being thoughtful about how you lodge those questions in this space. Another thing that I think is important or valuable to integrate would be peer feedback. So this is where if you are concerned about what that finish, uh, what that finish activity or assignment will look like, thinking about how you can instill peer feedback possibly as that chunk assignment version or as something that's due a week or two before. Uh, there's lots of different ways you can do this. You can have it very informal where you create a peer, you know, a, a peer accountability partner and they you know, throughout the semester, try to give feedback to one another. You can make it more formal, uh, where they actually, uh, you, the students actually have to submit their peer review of their peer, not just to that student, but also to you. So you can kind of see how the conversations are going. Um, you can, if you are doing any type of peer review, peer feedback, you definitely will want to spend some time in class to create a norming session to identify like what does it mean to give peer feedback? What does it mean to advise, to, um, to reflect, to, to look at, and to do so in a way that is respectful, in a way that is thoughtful, in a way that engages one another. And then all of this, again, you know, a way of doing uh, this type of feedback is to create a rubric which, which the students can use to guide their own assessment or review of their peers' work and use that as a conversation block, use that as a conversation starter to talk about peer review. And you might have them actually create that, that rubric so that they have a part in the discussion. And then finally, the thing I like to add on to any significant assignment is reflection. And sometimes I have I would have students do this as part of the assignment itself, or students submit it 24 hours, 48 hours, or in some short period of time after they have submitted the assignment. So they submit the assignment, and then uh, they also submit a reflection, talking about the assignment, what they thought the strengths were, where they struggled, uh, what they thought would be useful information for the instructor to know when reviewing the assignment. There's lots of different, you know, questions you can ask as part of the reflection. Uh, some of it might just be useful for the student to have that space to think about it. Some might be useful feedback for you or for, for the instructor to, you know, figure out and think about. Uh, you might ask them to grade uh, what, you know, grade themselves using a rubric, giving themselves feedback about what they did. And you might look at that as an opportunity as a negotiation or as a, a middle space for you to both talk about where the grade should be. Should it be entirely what you decide as the instructor? Should it be um, it, entirely what the student decides? Should it be somewhere in the middle? So those are five uh, tips on how on giving feedback and finding ways to help students, you know, use these as learning opportunities, use these as opportunities for conversation between you and the student, and to really develop, you know, a, a meaningful way to talk about learning uh, in their demonstration plan. So hopefully this has been useful. If you have other tips or have other ideas, please don't hesitate to send them my way. And thank you all very much.